What's up, everybody? Bradley with the Insurance Guys Podcast here. Before we get started with this episode, I want to talk to you about this week's sponsor. If you pay any attention to the Independent Agency channel, you know there's no hotter buzzword right now than VAs or virtual assistants. This week's sponsor, I'm proud to say, is CoverDesk, who offers an innovative client solution for agencies to outsource client-facing VAs. Created by agency veteran Andy Priesman, owner of Greenway Insurance. People, this is not your typical VA company. They offer a proven system of recruiting highly educated virtual assistants, ensuring consistent performance for your agency. With their experience, they're able to help you design a program that is just right for you and your agency. They implement by onboarding and training each VA in foundational insurance skills. Visit CoverDesk on the web at www.coverdesk.com or email them at hello at coverdesk.com or you can call them and tell them that the insurance guys sent you. Please do at 512-879-3345. Guys, give CoverDesk a ring. I promise you, you will not regret it. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys Podcast. My name is Scott Howell, your fearless host and leader, insurance agency owner and insurance evangelist for I Protect Insurance and Financial Services, based out of Huntsville, Alabama. And before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he is a six foot three sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama, parade first team All-American, rivals five-star recruit. He is a fantastic insurance agent and a great American. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and welcome the incomparable Mr. Bradley Flowers. How are you, Bradley? Great, Scott. How are you today? I'm the best I've ever been. We have got a guest on the show today, guys, that I've been wanting to get on here for the last year and a half. I met him out in San Diego at Mike Stromso's UPP event, which I encourage all of you to look into. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. In our next batch filing of podcast, which will probably happen in June, July time frame, we're going to have Mike on the show, and we're going to talk a little bit about the UPP and 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 let Mike just go because as as our guest knows today, once you let Mike go, he just goes. There's not much you can do about it. He's going to go. So I'm looking forward like, to that. I'll give you three things. No, wait, four. <laughs> yeah, five, five, <laughs> five. I got five. And yeah, before that, you're done, it's 20. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, so, guys, without further ado, but before I introduce you, let me say this. Our mission on this podcast is to help you guys any way we can. We're going to today, we're going to talk a little bit more about commercial insurance. I think it's a subject that we've kind of been remiss about, and there's a lot of agencies out there that write commercial. We want to talk to those guys a lot about commercial today and help them increase revenue in their agency, help them understand the the roadmap of how they need to go to get to where they want to be with their life and with their family and have the the things and the freedom that they've always wanted to have and I know this guy can do it I've watched him I've seen him I know how good he is at what he does and I know he can help all of you today so without further ado he is originally from Dublin California and he resides in Roseville California he studied at Cal Poly State University and he is the program director for Nine Point Strategies for Pizza Assurance and the Stratton Agency. He has also become a thought leader and a leading risk advisor to the cannabis industry. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my profound honor today to introduce the first time on the Insurance Guys podcast, Mr. Jesse Perini. How are you, Jesse? I am fabulous. Thank you so much for having me on today. Man, I am so proud and so happy to have you on i've listened to you talk at mike's upp event you know what you're doing you're a high level critical thinker you've been very very successful in the insurance world and in commercial insurance but before we go any further climb in the passenger seat of my delorean for just a moment and take us back in time and tell me how you got into the insurance world and just bring us up to today Well, I always like telling the story um, because it probably is the oddest thing for anyone. I am first generation Italian and I always tell people I was born into food. Um, Literally started working in grocery stores and restaurants at 10 years old and cutting my teeth and doing anything and everything um, and worked in the restaurant industry for about almost 25 years. I I literally was doing fine dining. I worked for the Hyatt Regency in Southern California, opened them up, helped them get their Ford Diamond Award. What the challenge for me was, is I 
was working 60, 80, sometimes 100 hours a week for someone else. And it was beyond draining. And I remember I was on vacation with my dad. We were in Hawaii. We had swam very far off of shore. And he had kind of those one honest, like, man-to-man talks with me. Like, all right, man, you're turning 30. What do you want to do? And I was like, Dad, I need a million bucks. I want to open a restaurant. I want to do this. And he was like, you're nuts. We, we're, we're just not doing that anymore. Um, you know I've been in the insurance industry. And I think everything you've learned in the hospitality industry would be fabulous in the risk management space. And I think you should look into getting licensed. And I don't know what it was, but I needed a change. And no matter how much money I was making, and I was making six figures, having good quality of life. I mean, I remember one year I joked, we went to Vegas seven times because we could. Right. It was just one of those things where we were making money and pissing it away too easily. And conversations I remember having with my grandfather before he died going, I'd come home and I'd bring him a case of great wine and I just would be very proud. And he looked at me and goes, I love you and I appreciate this, but you need to keep that money in the bank because you're making it and spending it. Well, 25 years later, I really understand that. And now being in insurance um, really kind of took me full circle. So yeah, I, I, I left the hospitality industry, got licensed in life and health and PNC, uh, property and casualty, actually faster than my dad was expecting. And he sent me off to a general agency uh, out in the valley that he um, that he had good relationships with, and they did commercial insurance. They were they did personal insurance, and kind of wanted to see if I could survive because he wasn't equipped. He was a one man shop with one employee. He needed to see if I could do it, and I got lucky in the process of making this change. Uh, the mortgage industry was through the roof. People were buying and selling homes, and it was like printing money. I think it was like two thousand five is what it was. And I was good at relationships and that's something I've always nurtured on. So instead of trying to figure out a way to sell insurance, I went to people and said, how can I solve your problem? And I started relationships with mortgage lenders and basically solving their homeowner's insurance on every deal they closed. Mm -hmm. And then I turned the homeowner's insurance into the auto and the umbrella and I'd write like 30, 40 of these packages a month. And I was doing really well. Problem was I didn't really like what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is when I went to my boss at the time and said, Hey, I know I'm making money and you're making money. It's a win-win, but I really don't like what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else? He's like, well, you ever thought about commercial insurance? I didn't even know what that meant. I just thought insurance was home and auto like everyone else did. And then at that point, he kind of looked me in the eye and said, you need to find something that you love and become the best at it. And I kind of went, well, I'm from the restaurant industry. And he goes, that's a good place to get into at restaurants are everywhere and everyone writes them. There's lots of carriers. The coverages are not hard and let's start there. So I did. And I literally just started going into the carriers and the contracts and learning the difference between nationwide and travelers and guard and CIG and the regional carriers and the national carriers and kind of selling. What was interesting for me was, I wasn't from, and I was actually in Turlock, and that's this tiny little place out in the Central Valley um, of California. And I was not a good old boy, and I wasn't from there. Even though I had family and friends out there, I was a road warrior. So I literally would drive up and down the 99 from 30 miles south all the way to almost LA. I was successful. And north of Modesto, all the way up to Sacramento, I was successful, but I couldn't do any business there. And at that point, I'd been up there for about two years, And my dad was ready. And then I moved from there out to the Bay Area. And that's kind of when the beginning of my evolution changed. So from those early days of starting to sell commercial insurance to today, where you sit today with the responsibilities that you have as a program director for not one, not two, but three different agency, you know, agencies out there, what's probably been the biggest lesson that you've learned relative to how you started and how you did things then, which I'm sure is probably the walk in and build relationships and sell a policy to today. What, what's what been the biggest change in your, in your thought process as it relates to building relationships, getting that business and, you know, continuing to cultivate those relationships. One of the things that I've learned in the process of when writing businesses When you're cold calling, whether you're walking in, calling them, marketing to them, that's probably the hardest possible way for you to get a referral. Uh, The easiest one is to have what I call circles of influence, 
or gold, people that make it rain for us. And you build relationships and they're in other areas where they'd be a CPA or they'd be a city official or they'd be, for me, franchise uh, owners. So I work with the franchise owners and they work backwards, the franchisees to me. It's about that nurturing of relationships so the referral can come to you. Mm-hmm. Really, the, the evolution for me is I don't quote insurance. I tell people straight up when I'm talking to people, I am not going to quote your insurance. I'm not going to shop you. I'm very specific when I, when I basically, I am expecting to get vetted and someone looking to hire me, not me quote insurance. So when I talk to someone, usually it's in person, I have a pretty straightforward stance. It's one of three questions. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate your time, Mr. Business Owner. I'm a business owner as well. I'm here for one of three reasons. You're shopping your broker. There was a claim that wasn't covered. You don't know why or both. Mm -hmm. And I shut my mouth. And they speak. And they are really clear within about 30 seconds on if they're going to tell the truth or if they're looking to leverage me. I am good at what I do, but I also take pride in choosing the correct clients. Mm -hmm. Shopping... Uh, is part of what we do, but in a, cur- in a commercial insurance aspect, you're really a risk manager and you need to be hired. And I always tell people I'm a strategic partner with any of people that I do business on a commercial level because what I provide is bottom line results to their P&Ls. Mm-hmm. And there are strategies and things to put into play that are very proactive to help people literally save money. I mean, I can save money all day long. Do you have strong culture? Do you believe in safety? Do you believe in accountability? Because I'm going to crack the whip and if we're on the same page, you're going to love me. But on the flip side, you may not like me. And that's where, once again, I'm about vetting who I work with because I don't want to work with everybody. I want to work with people that actually like me, like my approach, like what I do. And then we're going to have a great business relationship for years to come. I, I ultimately don't want to be involved with someone unless I'm involved with them for seven years or less. I mean, I mean, seven years or more. Then we can show real results because some of the best opportunities I've had have been literally a really bad situation. Mm-hmm. And we come in and we put together a whole strategy on this is what we're doing this month. We're going to take over this policy. This policy is a good care, but you're written wrong. And it's a strategy. And part of that is, and this is something we, we, we've talked about, Scott, is the broker record letter or the agent of record letter. This is the game changer when you're actually addressing this. Because ultimately, when you bring this to the table, you're now talking about you being hired and anybody else involved in the space is now going to be fired. And I'm mm-hmm. very clear about that when it happens because some brokers, and I don't, this isn't throwing one on the bus, but people actually don't fully disclose what they are. Mm-hmm. And I've had people, my best clients, sign VORs thinking that they were doing nothing other than, hey, they were trying to be polite to their neighbor who literally has asked over five years, can they work on it? And they thought they were just letting him quote on it. Right, they had right. no idea that they just fired me. So I call my clients when it happens and say, so John, did we have a problem? No, we're great, Jazzy. You know, you just fired me, right? And I'm very blunt about it because when they tell me, no, I thought you were just quoting, John, you were misled. Here's the deal. I'm already doing the work. You just don't see it because we've been your broker for so long. Do you want to see the 17 markets? We'll get them all and show you every year. The reality is now you see two because they're the top two and that's all we leverage for you. Mm-hmm. It's education. Personal lines, I think, unless you're really in high net worth individuals, most people, it's basic. You know, you have liability limits, got coverage, and the policy stands up. Commercial insurance, they're contracts that are much more in-depth than they actually can provide more coverage or get rid of coverage. And specifically in the spaces that I, I play in, coverage can get denied very easily if things are not compliant. But hey, we had, hey, we're all quoting the same markets anyway. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say positively to that, Bradley, in certain aspects that I work on, I got exclusivity on markets. Right. So that, but I mean, but that's part of the game. Mm-hmm. It's like you explain to people, hey, we got the same markets. I'm literally doing all this for you. We'll show you everything. It's education. It really is. And, and the more, just like anything, the more information we have, the better we can do our job, the better business owner you can be, the better you can be to your own company. And that's how I look at it is, be transparent with me, the good, the bad, the ugly. Tell your attorney, you just got to tell me so I can protect you. If I don't know, we both can be in a sling. You know what's going to happen? Your attorney is going to have you sue me and we all lose. Right. Hey, <laughs> hey, Jesse, I, had, I wanted to tell you something. So this morning we had another podcast with another commercial agent 
And he, he does things a lot like you do. But he said something to me this morning that I will never forget. I don't know. You may have heard this before. His name was David Carruthers down in Florida. He said, when I go meet with a commercial client, the meeting either lasts five minutes yep. or, or an hour and a half. Yep, that's exactly right. And I'll tell you why. So when you tee up the appointment, I have literally a checklist that I qualify them before I even get there. And the second I sit down, if they don't have it, I call them out right away. And at that point, we determine, are you BSing me and, work, and trying to work me? Or are you unintentionally unprepared and you're either going to go get prepared real quick? Because that's one of the things I do. I literally say, hey, thank you so much. They give you the information of why I'm there. If they right. lie to me there, I walk even faster. If we, they're honest at that point, then I go, oh, cool, you have your policies and then I literally go into a survey and a whole bunch of things. And, and it's a process like the 30 seconds gets me to five minutes. The five minutes gets me to 15. The 15 gets me to 45. And the 45 gets me an hour and a half. And when I get to the hour and a half, my close rate is like 80%. Right. That's the key is not quoting. It's walking them through the process of what you're going to do. So that they are acknowledging, wow, this is so different than anything I've ever done. And they either love it or they don't. And that's what I found is you either love what we're going to do and you're going to love how we work and it's going to be a win-win or you don't. Thankfully, I've gotten better at determining that quicker. So I'm not sitting there. Like I've had times you take, you drive two hours to an appointment and you leave five minutes later and they're dumbfounded. And I don't care because the reality is their intention was to do the same thing and get a different result. And you know that that can't happen. So we've been very successful in our, my agency with commercial insurance in one particular industry, which is habitational uh, with investors, property investors from all over the country. The reason that we've been so successful is because we know our shit backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards. Yep. And, and so my question to you is, and I'm not trying to blow my own horn, I, I'm getting to a question here, but for the agents out there that want to get into commercial insurance, I really believe the secret sauce is – you have got to know that particular industry inside and out, and you have got to become a thought leader in that industry to some degree. And, and I think the more of a thought leader you are, the more success you have. And when I say thought leader, you know, it's knowing the different people in the, that particular industry. But my question is this, for agents out there that want to get into commercial insurance, what is your advice from going – from I don't know shit from shampoo about whatever it is I'm going out to see this client about to industry expert on that. Because really that's what you are. That's what Jesse is in the, in the industries that you serve, you know, it backwards and forwards. No, and, and, I, and it, I actually hate to say it. It's the 10,000 hour rule. That's <laughs> and, right. as, as simple as it is, it is time served. Where, where are you going to find that energy to put in the time to learn Right. is your personal drive coming from the food industry going into restaurants and hotels and bars was like second nature for me so it was easy and then i just dove in i tell people if you really were 100 percent focused what took me about 10 years you could do it in about three right. but you got like you said hyper focus and you've got to learn all your contracts all your cares what's the difference between them all and then furthermore price is part of it and then you need to start talking to your underwriters building relationships and helping them tell you what's better on your product versus this. And yeah, you are more expensive. I mean, one of my best restaurant, my, my largest restaurant group I have is with a non-standard care. It's with Allianz, which used to be fire, Fireman's Fund. Mm -hmm. They write the most robust contract I can buy for any restaurant group in the world. And it's not the cheapest, but what's hilarious is when we went against everyone, and there's like 30 cares that we, we did this for like almost six years in a row, and then we, we stopped because we, we proved we couldn't. Most people just can't write the risk. Like mm -hmm. part of it's in terrorism situations, or they're in airports, or they're in, it, it's amazing that price really isn't what it's about when it comes down to the meat and bones of coverage. I would tell people, you're either buying coverage or you're self-insuring. And when people don't know what that means, it's just a matter of, you're gonna write a check for the difference. Right. So understand that that's what you're doing. And if you are aware of that, that's not a bad business play. It's a mitigation risk transfer that you're aware of versus, oh, now I'm actually on the hook for this. And I wasn't aware of it. Now attorney's got to get in and it, it really goes sideways. So like we talked about earlier, it's about educating. 
But back to the point of specialization, it, commercial insurance for me, everyone I know that's successful, they're not a generalist. Mm-hmm. They do one, two, or three things really well. Right. And it, for me, it started off me doing like hotels and restaurants. Um, we have a whole property division that I, I actually think we don't even manage now. We have a property division that handles it, which is good um, because that has little vacancies and things that I'm not even big on. That's more your space. Restaurants, I started doing everything from mom and pops, family style, food trucks, fine dining. And then from there, this really came about from luck. I started doing pizza delivery. Pizza delivery was nothing I had intended to get involved with. It was purely, I fell into it. I had clients of mine that were restaurant owners that started getting into pizza delivery and luck also happened. There was people in the industry was moving, underwriters were changing. There was what's considered the big five and now we're one of them. Um, and there were five agencies that basically managed the food delivery industry and pizza delivery industry nationally. And in timing, we became an outside broker, became successful. Then we had an opportunity to make an acquisition. We acquired a large book of business from Willis. And then we became Willis's largest broker and managed their entire program. And then now we're one of Amwin's largest brokers with the Domino's program because they've now acquired a lot of the book. But there's only, pizza delivery is one of the most challenging things in the world because it's about compliance. And we used to have admitted products. We don't even have admitted products now. So the carriers can deny coverage. And that's the scariest thing. So what we did was, saw what the entire industry did and then created a wedge or a differentiator. And for us, it was embracing technology. And, and I'm going to assume that you've reached this point from a premium size uh, in terms of the niches that you're in where you're no longer an agent, but am I correct that you are, have you reached the point where you've got the pen and you're creating programs for the specific industries that you serve to to narrow it down to, hey, this is a program specifically for Domino's Pizza. Yeah, so I have specific areas and like exclusivity with carriers. So like for certain carriers, we have now had them expand from pizza delivery uh-huh. because of our um, our portfolio with them. And now we have the ability to write all things delivery. So I'm writing last mile delivery with Amazon um, we're also writing cannabis delivery and we've actually, because of my expertise in pizza, we helped innovate cannabis delivery and, and we've been a leader in that space for almost five years. So yeah. it's been interesting to watch one industry roll into another for us. And for, it really was best practices. You I would have ever thought that and, cannabis and pizza went together. I, <laughs> well, I always make the joke. I mean, I got, Stromso's got the three P's. So do I, I got pizza, pot and property. Right. Talk a little bit about the cannabis side of things, because I remember, I guess about a a year to year and a half ago, that time frame, it was like I was getting all kind of emails about cannabis as it relates to insurance and every Facebook group, people are talking about it. Talk a little bit about your process of getting into that. Before you do that, Jesse, I got something to say. Yeah. Jesse took a took a, pl- a page out of the Scott Howell playbook. Of course, he had he's been doing this a lot longer than I have. But he pos- I watch him the way a crazy ex girlfriend watches you online. I keep up with Jesse. He has positioned himself as a thought leader in the cannabis industry, and I can't even imagine how far that's taken him in terms of opening doors for him to get in with the different associations that are associated with cannabis and then you get to those members and then you know it just becomes this spider web of what what were the three p's jesse again pizza pot and property okay that's the title of this episode yeah so cannabis kind of another situation people say you you make your own luck i always say you know it doors open you just choose to walk through them right and so once again we had an opportunity to make an acquisition. We did. We actually were more aggressive than I've ever been on any other deal. We had another agency that literally had a deal inked. They just didn't have the funding. We flew. It was, it was an agency in Arizona of all places because at the time it was illegal in Arizona, mm-hmm. but it was getting ready to pass record, uh, uh, medicinally there. Mm-hmm. Um, what's crazy, Arizona is the zero tolerance state. So it's like it's, it's hypocritical, but it's now officially fixed itself. But there was a small agency there that was really getting lucky from early marketing. I mean, they had been in the space. I mean, after we've acquired them, 
we now can say that we've been in the space for almost 11 years. So they were one of the first people to ever write the policies in the cannabis space. What happened was it blew up and started becoming so successful, they were not prepared for it. And the principals that had supported the producer for this program were really uncomfortable with it. It was not what they wanted to be known for. And we had an account manager in our office that was good friends with the account manager at their office. And they're just bullshitting one day. And our girl knew that we like to acquire books and agencies and we're always willing to talk. And no joke, this went from, hey, you guys interested to buy an agency with pot? to we flew to Arizona two days later and paid cash for it 30 days later. It was the fastest thing I've ever done. But it positioned us. We rebranded it, launched it as Nine Point Strategies, took everything we were, which is an HR and safety company, branded it as well under Nine Point, and launched this massive risk management platform about the same time that California was going with Prop 64, and it was going from medicinal only and recreational was going to get approved. The timing could not have been any better for us. So we kind of made that leap in about six months before that play happened. And then it was a matter of, how do we get involved? Well, I would never have thought this was a big deal, but because I was in Sacramento, the capital's here, and I literally got in bed with politicians, started going to city council meetings, started going to state official meetings, assembly meetings, starting to meeting, meeting people, the people that are literally making the decisions for the state of California. And then I continued to help them understand that not only we were a risk manager firm, but I had specialty experience in logistics for distribution and delivery. I can help you write policy. I can help you actually understand what the best practices need to be so that when you write the bills and have everyone play, we know that we can do it correctly. That has been the biggest game changer for me is I literally, I, I would never have thought that politics and cannabis were together and they're so in bed, it's ridiculous. So for me, I went from hating politics to now, I, I got a lot of friends that are lobbyists. I'm now at the Capitol at least once a month. I mean, we're not anywhere right now because we're on lockdown, but that was a huge changer. And then what I started doing was, okay, I've now, I've now become your trusted advisor for the city of Sacramento. Can you refer me to San Francisco and to Oakland and to Berkeley and to LA? And I started getting sit downs with all of their drugs ours and saying, we're a risk management firm. Let me help you. And that was literally my pitch for the first two years. What can I do to help you? What can I do to help you? Now, I am, like you said, the, the trusted authority. I don't have to worry about who we are. The other thing, I'm literally going to be biting off of you guys. We're going to be starting a podcast starting next week because purely for our cannabis stuff, because we're normally out and about with people. And this will help us continue to do what we've been doing for the last five years. How long have I been saying this? I know. Two years. Two years I've been saying, yep. find a niche, create a podcast specifically yep. for that niche, yep. become the guy that everybody wants to listen to. And the podcast is about the industry, not about what you do for the Correct. Yeah, And our whole right. thing is we're going to be talking about the solution. Like our biggest problem right now, and I'm actually not experiencing it in cannabis because it's essential. My businesses are all thriving and my delivery is going, like delivery is up 400% in the last three weeks. It's literally 420 every day right now for every company. So there's no pain in that industry, which is awesome. The pain I am having is all of my normal restaurants. Like I've had some of my largest restaurant group groups shut down. Like one had literally 700 employees are laying off this week. There's no loss of income. There's no coverage because of everyone's exclusions from the virus and bacteria. Yeah. The challenge we have now is that we're going to have an economic meltdown. And we do need to have the federal government step in like they did in 08 and basically save the banking industry. They need to do the same thing. Otherwise, in about two to three months, we're all going to be in a lot of pain because there are people yes, that have money. You can't spend it. And then the people that, that depend on service industry, whether it be food, massage, hotel, moat, I mean, that entire, that's 80% of the economy is down. So unemployment is at recession levels, if, if, not, if not depression levels, and it happened in a month. So it's, it's really without some type of support from the federal government, the insurance industry can't handle it themselves. Even if they're like told they got to do it, it, that would implode the insurance industry. The numbers I saw right now on loss of income this week is $383 billion in loss of revenue just in the last month. So Jesse, you said something just a minute ago that caught my attention. I wrote it down. When you bought the agency in Arizona, 
you talked about creating a risk management platform. Talk to the agents about what that is exactly. Well, the key thing uh, that separates, I think, commercial from personal lines is really an approach. You, you need to be doing much more than just quoting insurance. You need to come to them with a strategy on how they can be proactive with their risk management of their business. Habitational, you're, you probably have just property managers and people that do work, so the exposure is low. But like for me on a, on a restaurant, it's a matter of we have a high energy, high moving environment. Safety trainings literally happen daily. And then we have accountability. Um, it, it, I always tell people a safe culture is a proactive approach, which will show bottom line results. If you don't have a proactive culture and you think this is a waste of your time, luck will run out. I mean, I've had people be like, oh, I've never done anything in 30 years. I'm like, you're due. You're going to be the worst person to work with because I'm going to be basically the devil because I'm telling you to change everything. And you've never had these problems. Unfortunately, in the world we are in, we do not have people with the same work ethic or the same moral fiber from a generation before. Right. And now you have attorneys that actually thrive on uneducated employees that think that suing their boss will actually get them more money when the end result is they drive medical costs, insurance costs, they get a third of the money and the attorney is the only one that thrives. So it's a lose-lose. And it's one of those things where we're always trying to help. So back to the risk management, we had a human resources company. So we're basically a full-fledged human resources company. We do HR, your employee handbooks, terminations, hiring, firing, onboarding, all that fun stuff. So whether you need it or you just need support, we have that within our platform. The other aspect is we have a safety company. We do OSHA 30 trainings, lockout, tagout trainings. For, but there's about 300 safety trainings we do for Cal and for Fed OSHA. And then we kind of support that with the insurance. And then another arm to add in is benefits, and that's financial and health and wellness. So that's really the full-fledged platform that we have now. So when anyone, we talk to anyone, I don't leave anything on the table. I literally ask everything to find out where's an opportunity for you to buy because mm -hmm. insurance is my lead in, but sometimes you won't buy insurance, but you will buy safety or HR or hell you, you need benefits. Benefits take a BOR and I take control of that in 30 days. That's all about service because pricing is across the board, hundred percent the same. Now it's a matter of what do I do for you versus what your broker currently does for you. And that's the other aspect. Well, I, and I would think in the cannabis industry, in terms of a uh, risk management platform, is there any industry in the world that needs more of that than the cannabis industry? No, what, what's going on is uh, cannabis and technology are really sinking well. Um, uh -huh. Technology companies are very much in front. So they're, they're literally creating HRIS systems right. that basically have everything together. And then they can even connect with our API because I've got a couple of technologies. We're our management system, we're on Epic. Mm -hmm. And we're really big with CSR 24. So what that does is it gives them an online portal to all of their, all their documents, everything we provide them, their driver training, everything we have, they have another phone, then that can be connected to that as well. Because if they're a driving exposure, we're tracking all their drivers stuff and we want to make sure the drivers are not on the road. So we're pushing back and forth. So technology and cannabis are really in line because compliance is basically everything. And if they get out of compliancy in any aspect, they could lose their license right. and everything they've done can go down the shitter. Yeah. So what's crazy is pizza might be one of the hardest industries and people to work with and learning how to handle those clientele and implement that same thing that's needed for cannabis. Dude, it's so well received. It's amazing. Like they want to be trained. They want to do it right. They want to hire good employees. Like, they don't want to waste time because all they're trying to do is get through a checklist of a thousand things every day. And if I can help them, which is our approach is let me help you make your business more efficient. Plain and simple. Well, I want to close the podcast out. I want to ask one question for these agents that are out there. Let's say they're a generalist. They've been doing insurance for three or four years. They sold a few commercial policies, but they really want to get to a point to one day, you know, be a, a large commercial shop. What advice would you have for them relative to how to get from where they are now, point A to point Z? Find an industry that you love and hyper focus. That's it. Um, and find because you're going to have to have energy to do the work. So find yeah. an, an industry that you love and hyper focus. 
And, and ultimately, what I'll tell someone is a good personal lines package is what, two, 2,500 bucks, 3,500 bucks? That's a tiny commercial policy. Right. Like an average commercial policy is about five grand, and you're making 15%. So it's like just commission dollars increase. I mean, really my biggest thing is my game is even leveled up. I literally am only working on accounts that make at least $5,000 in revenue. Otherwise, I don't even consider it because of the, the labor I put into my accounts, how much energy we put into them. And then furthermore from that aspect is I can't be expected to give you everything when I don't make a certain amount of money, but I want to be able to do that. So what I'm doing is just, fishing in a new, a new pond, a bigger fish, there's less fish, but uh, I, I like where I'm fishing because we're working on right now, probably one of the largest operations there's in California, the 12 acre campus in Sacramento, vertically integrated, it's a $91 million project that's gonna be doing $200 million in revenue within the first 24 months. And this, this is cannabis? This is cannabis. Yeah. And, and like, that's the kind of money that's in that space. I will tell you, I've been doing cannabis now for almost five years. It's been five years of work because the first five, I would say the first three and a half years, we were just grinding and learning and writing bad business because we're just trying to help everyone. We're just trying to help everyone. And now I've realized I can't help everyone. We want to help the people that, I don't care if you're a cottage farm and you're a husband, a wife, that's all you are. If you have your shit together, I want to help you survive. If you are being a jerk off, and you're agitated about being compliant and you're only doing this, you don't get arrested, we are not the agency for you. Because for me, I'm trying to help people do one of two things, succeed and create a brand that's a legacy that they've earned the right to have or build a brand that's gonna get acquired in two to three years by Coca-Cola. They're both a legit business model and we're working on both. So what I ask them is, what do you wanna do? And we'll help you get there. And if they can't handle that, then we move to the next one. Right. Well, Jesse's I, I a don't... whole lot less stressed out than he was five years ago. <laughs> uh, I'm a lot less stressed out than I even was six months ago. So, and, and in a positive, um, our company is, is doing really well. Uh, we, we literally are growing at the speed of light. We may double our size again this year. And what's awesome is I've got 10 offices nationally right now. Uh, we've got five with nine point strategies in them. And the goal will be that all the nine points in every office nationally by 2021. Hey, I tell you, Jesse, what I have figured out from talking to agents all over the country all the time, Bradley and I have an opportunity to speak to insurance agents all over the United States. And one thing I've kind of come to realize is, let's say you find a niche in the commercial space that's a good, a good niche, something that you're interested in. One thing I tell agents is, go back and look in that past life at what you enjoy doing or, or things that you're used to or an industry that you've been a part of and you understand yep. that that really helps. But one thing I've noticed is if you embark on this, finding your niche in the commercial space, I've, I've talked to enough agents to realize that 24 month mark, two years of really grinding. What we're talking about today is not something you can start doing tomorrow and August you're writing a ton of business. It's a, at about the 24 month mark. If you really grind and you're ma meeting the right people and you're doing all the right things and you're, you're positioning yourself as a thought leader and you really, really know your stuff at about 24 months, it really kind of starts imploding on itself to some degree. No, you're 100% right. And it's like anything else. It's, it, it's that momentum where you're just, it's like you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing, and all of a sudden you get to that plateau and it just, now it just starts to roll the other direction. And right. the goal really is once the, 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 the turn on valve, like for us, for pizza, we're a preferred uh, vendor with 18 franchises nationally. Mm -hmm. That was something we worked on for years. Now I don't even go to, go to conventions anymore. We just individually promote and support the franchisors. Cannabis, I support cities, I support associations, I'm on the state board for delivery, I'm on the state board for distribution, I'm on the state board for risk management and HR. You gotta put yourself in positions to you don't have to be the expert today, you just have to wanna be it. Right. And by that energy and desire, you will by just putting the work. And then more importantly, you just gotta not back off because it's gonna be hard. And the reality of hey, anything that you achieve in life is not easy. Hey, I've got great news for you. Would you like to know what it is? Yes. So the first thing I'll tell you is when you start your podcast here in the next week or two or three or whenever you get started, 
don't stop until you get to 50 episodes. So whatever happens, yeah. you get three people listening to it or watching it, 50, 50 episodes. But the good news for you is this. However much you think you know about cannabis today, as we sit here on this podcast, after 50 episodes of having people inside the world of cannabis on the show, your knowledge level is going to triple or quadruple from where it is today. Because every episode, you're going to learn something you didn't know. That's awesome advice. I never even thought about that way. That's yeah, it's, it's called an unintended consequence. <laughs> And, and, of, and, of course, the relationships you're going to have. I mean, the, Absolutely. The now, and I've got great clients, and we even have good relationships with the people. Like, I have people now where they're not my client, but they trust me, they respect me, and I'm on panels with them. And it's all about my reputation at this point. I literally tell people, that's all I got. That's all right. I have is my reputation. As long as I stay true to my clients and stay true to myself, everything else will work itself out. Absolutely. Well, man, I appreciate you being on the show today. It, it has been a, an honor to have you on here. And you may not be able to do this. Do you think you're going to be at Mike's next UPP in uh, the September time frame? You're talking about, you're talking about, is it in September, November this year? Somewhere, yeah, somewhere. Well, in that we're going to find out. <laughs> well, I mean, right now, I mean, on a negative, you guys may have may or not have heard it. Um, my buddy who's in Virginia, right by the Capitol, they're fixing a lockdown until June 10th. So we, we should be expecting that to be going nationally soon. Right. And we've got probably two more months of this at least. Yeah, there. I think uh, based on the information I was looking at last night here in Alabama, we have not gone on official stay-at-home lockdown yet, but I think that's coming in the next day or two. Yeah, we, we've been on it for uh, three weeks now in California, and it's, it's made a difference like anything. It's just weird, crazy times. No one's ever experienced this, and we just need to take it seriously so that we can make a turn for the better. Hey, real quick, before I let you go, tell everybody what you're about to do for your clients relative to the video that we talked about right before we got on the oh, show. Yeah. So this afternoon, I'm going to be shooting a video for Nine Point Strategies, one for Pizza Assurance, and one also for PCF, our parent company. Um, and basically what it's going to be doing is just letting them know that we're here. Um, we're, we're having the same challenges that, that you are as individuals and as business owners. And furthermore, that we've now bunker down and set up at home just like you have. So everything's the same. Call us if you need anything. We're here to help. And more importantly, I mean, one of the things we've actually done proactively, and this is something I can tell people to do if they haven't, Workman's Comp Cares across the United States are now letting people, whatever they've paid toward their premiums as far as payroll, have it be paid in full so that there's no payments needed until this stops. Mm -hmm. And that's bought some of my clients three, four, five months of no payments uh, we've got property and casualty cares do the same thing. So just something to think about as well with negotiating uh, on behalf of your clients. And that's kind of what we're talking about. It's like, we're just, the other thing I will also tell people is for business income, there's no coverage. You still need to turn in claims to get a denial letter because we believe there's going to be a stimulus that's going to happen. The federal government's going to do it. That denial letter is going to move you faster in line to get money sooner versus starting the process in three months like everyone else is going to be. Hey, are you going to mention on your video uh, are you going to say something to all of your clients about something to the effect of, you know, before you just cancel your insurance, call us first and let's talk about it and see if we can help. Well, what we're doing just as a, as a proactive trigger, normally notice of cancellations go out and for small stuff, we don't really care. Our bigger stuff we're paying attention to. And I know on an E and O aspect, you're supposed to do all the same one or the other, which is kind of the problem. We are literally responding to everyone now than NLC, finding out that if they're having financial challenges, and if they are, we're going to negotiate on, we are negotiating on their behalf with the insurance care to get either payments deferred or right. pushed off till June, July, or August. Got you. Well, man, I, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you being on the show. It means a lot to me means a lot to Bradley. I want to have you come back on the show again. Any, anytime, man. I, you know me, I, I, paying it forward. It's the only way I got here. If you don't help others, none of this matters. Hey, hey don't be surprised if I don't uh, give you a shout or, or an email uh, here in the next couple of months. I w I'd like to get with you offline about some stuff too. Yes, I, I'm, I'm a yes, uh, lots of stuff. And now the video is going to be pushing even more. We can do some more collaboration and have some fun. I, uh, the whole podcast is a learning thing for me, but Likewise, I've been being told to do it. Now I'm going to be forced to do it, and it's a good thing.
Just because I'm uncomfortable, we'll overcome it. There you go. Well, guys, listen, I think you've gotten some excellent information today from Jesse. Again, I appreciate him so much being on here. Remember, rewards come from action, not discussion. He is the Webster's Dictionary of getting your ass out from behind that desk and going out and building relationships and writing good business, making money for your family, for your wife, for your kids, for your parents that are struggling. Write good business for the companies that you represent and write good business for the agencies that you represent. Bradley Flowers, I love you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Jesse. Hey, appreciate it. Guys, you are listening to the Insurance Guys podcast, and we'll see you back here real soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at sarahlandinsurance.com. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of the Insurance Guys. Take care.